I really enjoy these animations, and I've got some more to show you. But before that, maybe we should ask, where do these come from? We start with a set of points around a circle, and then we add a second set of points. In my last video, I discussed how these sets are created, so I won't go into the details now. All we need to know is there are two types of points, which I've colored with blue and red. And there's a polynomial that takes us from the left side to the right side. But the polynomial itself isn't super important. Let's not look at that. We want to look at the diagram. And this diagram is OK. It shows left to right, but it's not great. We have two circles here, but maybe we should just combine them into one. To keep things clear, we'll make the dots on the right hollow, and then we'll put these together on the same circle. Now, this filled point corresponds to this hollow point, so we'll add an arrow saying this just goes right back to where it started. And then this filled point corresponds to this hollow point, so we'll add an arrow that says this goes over there. And we'll do that for the other points until we arrive with this diagram. And we'll remove the unnecessary arrow and the points just to simplify things. And this is the starting point for this animation. OK, so we have a diagram describing the transformation of this polynomial. But it's not the only one. We also have this polynomial that gives us a different set on the right. And if we follow the same procedure, we get this diagram. And this is a starting point for this animation. OK, so we have these two different diagrams. Maybe we want to differentiate between them. So we'll call the one on the left 10, 3, and the one on the right 10, 7. Why are we doing this? So this diagram is 10, 3. The order is 10, and that's because the points we used were 10 evenly spaced points around the circle. We didn't use all of the points, but that's where they came from. And then the multiplier is 3. This arrow starts a tenth of the way around the circle, and it ends 3 tenths of the way around the circle. The distance was multiplied by 3. And similarly, this arrow starts 2 tenths of the way around, and it ends 6 tenths of the way around. Again, we multiply by 3. And this order and multiplier completely describe the diagram. This is 10, 3. But maybe we want to think about it as 2 times 5, 3. And that's because 5 is a prime number. Um, but maybe we could replace it with a different prime number. So here is 2 times 7, 3. And here is 2 times 11, 3. And if we look more generally, here is 2 times p, 3 for various primes. And we see they all look similar. And we can change the multiplier to 5, or 7, or 9. But before we go too in depth, let's take a step back. And let's look at the simplest case. And that would be the order being just p, some prime, and the multiplier being just 1. So if we look at that, we see there are no arrows. If the multiplier is 1, every point just stays where it is. So what about multiplier 2 or 3? What do we notice? Well, first, there's only blue arrows. Order p doesn't give us any red points. So maybe let's play around with the color. Another thing that I notice now is the diagrams all have horizontal symmetry. And we see an example here with 13, 4. This is symmetrical along that dashed line. So given the diagram for p, k, let's say we pick a random point, and we'll call it a. And that's some distance around. The multiplier is k, so a gets sent to a k, which maybe is here. Now, a nice property of p, just having one prime, is that if we have a point a, we always also have the point negative a, 
which is the same distance, just the other way around the circle. Okay, and negative a is going to get sent to negative ak, which is the other side from ak. And so for every arrow, we will get another arrow that is just a flipped version. And because every arrow has a flipped version, the entire diagram will be symmetrical. And this idea of using negatives also gives us another thing to look at. Not only the points can be negative, but also the multipliers. So here we have some negative multipliers. And when we get down to negative one, things get very boring. We just get straight lines. So if we have p comma negative one, for any point a, that's just going to get mapped to negative a, which is the same distance the other way around. And so the arrow is going to be straight down. And so every single arrow will just be straight up and down. And that's why we got those somewhat boring diagrams. And you'll notice we didn't even use p in this demonstration. This applies for any number n. Negative 1 as a multiplier always gives us this straight line diagram. And so if we look at 2p, comma negative 1, we see the same thing. But maybe let's look at negative 3. Here with 2p, these shapes are also symmetrical, but this time it's vertically. If we have a diagram for 2p, comma k, and we have some point b, then b will get sent to bk. So maybe that's over here. A property of 2p is that if we have the point b, we also have a half minus b. So we go halfway across the circle and then subtract b. We'll always get that point. And this will get mapped to k over 2 minus bk. Here we need to introduce a little trick. The order and the multiplier cannot both be even. At least one of them has to be odd. And since 2p is even, that means that k is odd, which means we can write k being equal to 2m plus 1. So below, we'll replace k with 2m plus 1. And now we can simplify that to being m plus a half minus bk. But going m times around the circle just takes us back to where we started. So we can remove the m, and we're left with a half minus bk, which is the mirror version of bk. So for every arrow that starts at some b, we will get another arrow that is vertically symmetrical, and therefore the entire diagram is vertically symmetrical. So we always see symmetry for p and 2p. Does that continue forever? No. 15 comma 2 is not symmetrical. And if we increase the order, there's a lot of other shapes with a similar design that also aren't symmetrical. So here are all of the diagrams for 15, and we notice only these four are symmetrical. Half of them are not. And for a larger example, here are the diagrams of 77. And again, only four of them are symmetrical. For most cases, we've lost this nice property. And in general, for any primes p and q, most diagrams of order p, q are not symmetrical. But there are two situations that do result in symmetry. The first situation we can see with 21, comma, 8. And here, we're going from the left to the right, but the sets of points are identical. And so we might think, oh, this is just that case where every point stays where it is. But that's not true. There are some arrows, it's just that every arrow goes to a point that already existed. So why does this happen with 21, comma, 8? Well, let's think of it instead as 3 times 7, comma, 8. And this is situation 1, and there's two things we need for this situation. First, q is one more than a multiple of p. And that works here because 7 is 1 more than a multiple of 3. The second criteria is m is 1 more than a multiple of q. And clearly 8 is 1 more than a multiple of 7. So this also works here. And so here's some more cases of this situation 1. 
And these are pretty nice, but we get even cooler shapes with situation two. So for an example, we have 21 comma negative eight. Here, the sets are different, but not that different. The one on the right is just a rotated version of the one on the left. And it gives us a diagram that looks like this. We see it's symmetrical horizontally. Why does this work? Well, for situation two, we only need one criteria. The multiplier squared is one more than a multiple of the order. So here, negative eight squared is one more than a multiple of 21. So this case works for situation two. And here are the situation two shapes when the order is 15. But one and negative one are kind of boring, so let's remove those. We'll just look at the other two. So we have these two shapes, uh, and 15 is three times five, um, but let's change that second prime. So we have three times seven, three times 11, 13, 17, and 19. And now we see the diagrams on the left are all similar, and the same with the right, but not between them. So what is causing that? The primes on the left are one more than a multiple of three. Seven is one more than six, 13 is one more than 12, 19 is one more than 18. And we will instead write this as Q is equivalent to one mod three. So for the case on the right, q is equivalent to 2 mod 3. So we want to keep this in mind for the animations. So here, 1 mod 3. And here, 2 mod 3. Now let's change that first prime from 3 to 5. To wrap things up, here are some asymmetrical animations. And some using three primes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed looking at these animations with me. Um, I'm currently working on a, another video on a related topic that is a little more heavy on the math, but produces a really cool result. So subscribe if you want to see that when it comes out.